back to better living with better retirement because it's that time. It's Friday. I'm here with Ron Meyer from, I said Meyer, I meant Meyers. Meyers, yes. I was thinking about not saying citizens, citizen, citizen advisory group. And Meyers, correct. Yes. Woo. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Charity. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to talk about Medicare and we're going to talk about Medicare Part D prescription plan drug plans because it gets really confusing for it, people it very much can be very confusing the party aspect and here's so. why because there's a lot of them over 30 different plans available there can be over 30 different part d prescription drug plans That's so a, part d is just from. one part of medicare and um you know we've talked previously about these welcome to medicare seminars yes. that we do for our clients and their um and one thing that we talk about is these Part D prescription drug plans. It's one component of Medicare. Uh, Part D provides the prescription drug coverage for individuals. Um, and there's a lot of rules and a lot of complexity to that. It's something we spend probably a good 15 minutes in our seminars talking mm -hmm. about. Um, I'm just going to summarize a couple key things because we don't have all the time to go yes. through all the details about it. But it's certainly important. There's a, there's a lot of rules um, that people need to be aware of in understanding how Part D plans work and choosing the proper Part D plan for them. I'm, I'm going to guess that there are a lot of different things that would come into play when you're choosing which one works for you, whether that's uh, age and maybe health and lots of different things play into what one would work for you. Well, that, that's correct. So there's, there's over really 30 different standalone Part D plans and then there's another 20 Part D plans that are part of Medicare Advantage plans that people can choose from. So a lot of different options. And one of the most important things for people to understand is each Part D plan has its own formulary, and a formulary is just a listing of the medications that that plan covers. All right. So they can all cover different medications, and so one of the things that we want to make sure we're evaluating is whether the Part D plan we choose for you specifically covers your specific meds. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important, it's probably one of the most important things that we look at in evaluating all these different Part D plans. Um, we use a tool through the Medicare.gov website, it's called the Plan Finder. Um, it's something we pretty much use with every individual we meet with in evaluating different plans. Uh, we share that with everybody. We talk about that at our seminars, how we can do that and evaluate all these different options um, that have different premiums and different levels of coverage that we really have to understand to make sure we make the right choice because once we enroll into a Part D plan, we're pretty much in that plan for the rest of the year until we can make a change possibly the next year. Because that's uh, one where you've only got the one window, right? Exactly. We talked about that window in the fall that people can change their plans, but basically that's the only time they can make a change in most situations. Which makes it a pretty big decision exactly. to make. Exactly. A very big decision. Now there's a late enrollment penalty too. Right. So some people don't understand that Medicare, the rules of Medicare uh, basically state they want you to enroll into a Part D plan when you are first eligible unless you have other creditable coverage. Mm. But if you don't enroll, you may be subject to a future late enrollment penalty. And that late enrollment penalty really um, can add up because it can be applicable every month for the rest of your life. It's not just a one-time penalty. The basics of that penalty are for every month you don't enroll into a Part D plan that you could have enrolled, that you were eligible to enroll, mm -hmm. and that you did not have other creditable coverage, that penalty is 1% per month for every month you waited to enroll, and then it's a percentage of the national average premium, and then it's applied every month for the rest of your life once you do enroll. And so that it can be up. very, it can, it can be yeah. very um, costly penalty if we don't understand those rules. And so we may not need a Part D prescription drug plan right now, Maybe we're only on one or two generic meds and so forth, but if we don't enroll when we're first eligible and we don't have that other credible coverage, then we may be subject to that penalty. And that so, can get costly. Correct. Now, you also talk about the donut hole. It's not the kind of donut hole that I like to talk about, and you've got a little slide here that kind of explains that donut hole yeah, to we'll, us. Yeah, we'll explain it briefly. Um, again, not going to go into the exact detail about it, but um, the prescription drug plans, these Part D plans, and they're actually insurance plans that are offered by private carriers that have contracted with Medicare. So we got over 30 different companies maybe offering Part D plans, but they're all subject to the same structure of coverage, and they're when these Part D plans were created back in 2006 mm -hmm. by Congress, they created phases of coverage, mm -hmm. and each phase has different levels of coverage that people are subject to. And one phase is this donut hole. That's how people are most familiar with it. Technically, it's called the coverage gap. But basically, this donut hole says you have less insurance coverage, you're responsible for more out-of-pockets mm. uh, for your prescription cost. And so that can get very costly 
um, if someone does get into the donut hole. And this type of structure of prescription coverage is very different than, than anything anybody's really ever used to because no other prescription drug plans pr have coverage under this, this type of structure. And so this donut hole, it's important that we understand um, how the calculations work that we get into the donut hole versus we get out of the donut hole, what the costs are in the donut hole and everything. So it can be very complex, can be very expensive if we get into the donut hole. There is a provision of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare right, right. that is shrinking this donut hole down little by little. By 2020, this donut hole may go away depending on what happens politically going forward. Right. We don't know what's going to happen with the Affordable Care Act. Um, but there is some efforts right now to shrink this donut hole and to really limit the out-of-pocket prescription costs that people have in the donut hole. Well, but again, very complex. Well, like everything in yeah. Medicare, Correct. Part D is very complex. You guys have some seminars coming up uh, in June. We've got a slide that shows kind of when some of those are. It looks like June 13th, you've got one at the Perrysburg Public Library, June 16th in Sylvania, uh, again, the 16th, Owens Community College, and the 17th uh, at the Arrowwood, Arrowhead Park Campus, Owens Community College. These are simply educational seminars and people don't have to RSVP. They certainly could if they wanted to, but they can just show up and you guys will try and explain all of this. That is correct. So our educational seminars that we do, um, again, we do these on a monthly basis. Right. These are our ones coming up. We try to do different locations across Northwest Ohio. Um, someone can certainly go to our website and see other uh, events, other locations if, if these don't work. But they are, someone can truly just show, show up. up. We don't have to RSVP. It is an opportunity. We spend about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, talking about all these different parts to Medicare, and it's truly an educational event. They will help you out and help you navigate the way. Just give them a call if you need more information. We'll be right back.